So welcome to the final episode of this season of Japan Business Time, uh, Lewa edition with Rochelle Karp. And uh, this week we're taking a topic from Shizen Taisu, who uh, is nervous about his upcoming new experience working at a Japanese company and uh, asking for some tips on how to uh, basically not screw it up. Right, exactly. Right, so it's a nervous time. You're about to join a Japanese company and your, your, your biggest worry is, uh, for a lot of people actually, there's two things I was really worried about when mm -hmm. I first joined a Japanese company. First, you've got the mandatory health checkup before you join. Ah. And I always thought, what a terrible time to find out that you have a really serious health <laughs> problem. I mean, does that ever happen? Does someone like not get hired because they have a health problem? I've never heard of it, but right. you assume that they're doing it because they well, want to check. I mean, why, why would they do it otherwise? I don't know. It's very strange. And they tell you that your hiring is contingent on the health check. Yep, right, of course, which of course would be illegal in a lot of places, but yeah. So I don't understand, especially if you're changing jobs. That's a really, you already given yeah. notice at the last place, but the oh new place gosh, won't confirm you. Oh my gosh, uh, and then you worry about the stress affecting your health checkup. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I get okay. nervous about. He didn't mention that, but he mentioned okay. the second thing that people get nervous about, which is that uh, it's pretty common in most Japanese companies, maybe even overseas, and I think it's forgivable under Japanese employment law, that there's a three-month sort of probationary period where basically if you set the building on fire, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty extreme, but it does create a nervousness that you're on a probation where they can decide at the end of that three months um, not to continue with the employment. Right, right. But you, at least in the United States, a lot of companies do that as well. Yeah. So it's not a Japan-only thing. I think the big thing in Japan is once someone's passed that probation period right. and then they're hired, it's really hard to fire them. Yeah. So I think Japanese firms just want a chance to make sure the person isn't a total disaster. Right. So the question really then becomes, uh, for someone about to start working at a Japanese company, how can they avoid being seen as a total disaster within the first three months? Right. Well, I think it's don't make any like major, huge, crazy mistakes, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think it's just going in and and being polite and being nice and like learning how to do things and like finding out what the rules are and following them, right? All those yeah. basic things, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's, and it's not so much. I mean, like I say, it would have to be extreme. It would have to be something like not showing up, uh, something like or being late a lot. That li being late's a bad one. Yeah, being late is bad. Also, getting you know, um, starting arguments with people and being you know, uh, again right. off the bat, off right, the bat. Right, right, yeah, not a good idea. Um, so it, it's probably better to look at this more from how to not screw something up so much as just what are the things you should do going in just uh -huh. to ensure that you have a smooth transition period. Right. My general advice for the culture here is go in if you go in with a humble uh, attitude. Um, which that will generally come out in things that you'll be careful, you'll show up a little bit early, you'll double check your work, you will ask questions, you won't uh, try to cover and be a know-it-all, and you mm. know, which will make people incredibly nervous. If you go in with a, if you show a humble attitude, a respectful attitude and listening, it's pretty hard to screw up with that. Mm -hmm, At mm -hmm. least not in the way that you get dropped on a probation. Yeah, exactly, right. What are the types of examples of, uh, do you know any examples of uh, expats where you've been asked to come and, and help? Where they've really been acting in a way that's disastrous, or in a way that they really needed coaching, that you're really doing this wrong. Um, you mean someone who just joined a job at a Japanese firm, or yeah, or, yeah. or or an expat who's come into Japan? Well, just generally, just people just doing things really wrong and and, and, and not real, maybe not realizing uh, that they need to adjust mm. their behavior here. Right. I I've seen more personally in my consulting work more examples of that in the U.S. Yeah of someone coming from Japan to the U.S. and just not fitting into the environment or acting in a way that's not appropriate. Right. I've seen more, I've been personally I've seen more of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly, look, I, I would say uh, neither of us, you've never heard of anyone failing a three-month probationary period, neither no, of no, us. No. So, no, so, so, so it's not like it happens all the time, right? Yeah, and we're not saying, you know, paint yourself purple and run through the office, but <laughs> you, know, uh, you probably don't have to fear it as much as you might have to fear it. Right. I have heard of probationary people failing probationary periods in America and in Australia. Right. Um, so perhaps you don't need to uh, assume it has the same degree of fear associated with it, but at the same time, it's pretty much just don't be an idiot. Right, right, exactly, <laughs> basically, yeah. Just common sense, sustain right. common sense for three months and you should be okay. Right. <laughs> um, but certainly, the um, look, people, especially if you're coming into Japan, you may feel stress, you may feel uh, all sorts of pressure, you may put pressure on yourself, um, you may not know how to cope with it. 
Um, so there are all sorts of um, things. Just coming in and uh, feeling like it really is less up to the company, more the employee feeling like, oh, I made a mistake with this job. Or, you know what, I want to go back to my old job. Mm -hmm. um, these sorts of things typically happen as well, and it provides right. a mutual way to resolve that. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, yeah, with Japanese companies, just the old, uh, don't, the mistakes that I made, I'm saying these because I made these mistakes, um, attempting to, I always thought the value of a good positive can be attitude. Uh, makes people very nervous here when you're new. <laughs> you know, positivity. Yeah, I mean, too, too over -eager. <laughs> they know positivity can be taken as oh, you need to you need to be slowed down, kind of. It can it can be interpreted. We're trying to make too many things happen at once, right? Yeah, overloading yeah. yourself. And then, this is another thing with Japanese companies. Japanese companies, traditional Japanese companies, and I, I remember Fujitsu was like this. They sat me in front of a computer terminal, told me for the first week just read the online corporate portal. And, and, and you know they they start you at a snail's pace and the ramp is really slow. Whereas I joined it, an yeah. American company and day one I was doing the stuff. Deeper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally different in that sense. And it, and perhaps uh, maybe uh, non Japanese might get antsy during that period right, because right. you can be so hands off. Right. Well, well, the other thing I want to warn people about is you know in a lot of times in Japanese companies there is no job description. No. Oh, yeah. So I know when I started working as a Japanese firm for the first two weeks, I was sitting around waiting, reading the newspaper, waiting for my boss to give me something to do. Yeah. And if I hadn't decided, yeah. okay, I'm going to have to start suggesting things, I never would have done anything. Yeah. So sometimes you have to make your own job. That's that's one thing as well. Right. And when you start doing that, making sure that you're communicating as you do it, and you're maintaining a sort of a humble attitude, I don't think I can't really. I really honestly. Short of anything criminal, it's really hard to think, or complete absenteeism, it's really hard to think of a scenario that you would fail a probationary period yeah. here, but, but again, don't take it for granted. Um, <laughs> you know, don't, don't go crazy. Um, be humble, ask, and uh, yeah, enjoy it. I think it's a great opportunity. Yeah, good luck. Uh, so yes, uh, that is the end of this season. Our time is up, but yeah. uh, we hope you enjoyed this uh, new season of Japan right, Business right. Exactly, yeah, thank you. Hopefully it will still be Reiwa next time we record another season. <laughs> and, yeah, no, uh, I certainly hope so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yes, uh, great, to, great to talk to you again. Okay. And uh, as always, uh, if you've got more topics or things that you'd like for us to talk about, remember to leave them in the comments. Exactly. And we'll look at, we, we look at them really carefully. So. Yeah. And we'll be back again okay. soon. Exactly. Thanks so much. See you. Bye.